Hello everyone, welcome to soundproofguide.com. In this video, I'll be talking about how to make your own sound isolation box for recording, for voice recording. So this is perfect if you're just doing a small voiceover where you're not really showing your face, of course, but also if you're not doing like a podcast, if you're doing like a one or two hour long podcast, it's a lot better, of course, to have a sound isolation shield where it's you don't have to dig your face right into it. So that would make it more comfortable for, of course, longer recording. And I also have a video on my top pick of isolation shields right up here. So go check that out if uh, that is more in your field. But if you want something that you just need better sound because your room doesn't really have the proper acoustics, a sound isolation box will work perfectly. And that's what I used for a long time just to make recordings, voiceovers. But I will build one in front of you and it'll only take a couple of minutes with only two items. And it won't cost you more than 20 bucks, 30 maybe. It'll cost you about $30. But at least it's a lot cheaper than buying one. If you wait towards the end of the video, I'll give you some advice on how to build this box without using acoustic foam panels and with an item that you probably already have in your home. So make sure to stick around till after the acoustic foam and I'll give you a little tip on what to use that is extremely similar to acoustic foam panels that you probably already have in your home. So let's begin. So one big reason why I choose to build these isolation box instead of buying them is because of what you will see on your screen right now. For $50 on Amazon, if you're looking on your screen, you have quite a similar type of box that I am going to build. You have the empty boxes that comes with it. You have the acoustic foam panels. Now there is two ways of doing this. You can do it the nice looking way or you could do it eh, doesn't look as good but it still does the trick pretty good so what's nice with going with a box or even a rubber made uh, container is that it's a lot bigger so if you want you can put your whole head in it and it, it can work that way whereas a smaller box you can just put the microphone in it and kind of just peek in front of it but it will make it sound a lot better so you have your box pretty easy and behind me you have acoustic foam so acoustic foams are very inexpensive and they work perfectly for this type of application because most sound isolation box that you will find on the market is basically full of these things in it. So it doesn't cost them a lot of money to make, even though you're paying upwards of 50 and sometimes $100 just for a box. So in the end, it doesn't have to look perfect. The type of box that I like are these foldable boxes. You just take the bottom out, you fold it back. So if you're on the road, you can bring this all with you and you don't really need to lose space. You can just put all of your foam inside the box. The thing is, if you want to make it look perfect and you can, but then you'll have to cut everything to size and you'll most likely have to glue the acoustic foam into the box for a more permanent setup and you should be good to go. Now, this box is small enough for three acoustic foams. So all I need to do is curve them a little bit, which will certainly not hurt anything. It will most likely help matters. So you just, it'll be more of a curve inside. So now all you need to do is place your microphone right inside. So this is perfect for just voiceovers. If your room doesn't have the proper acoustics, then you can simply make a voiceover 
and I will show you the difference in sound in a minute. Just a quick pause, if you like this type of content, consider subscribing to our channel. And also feel free to leave a comment, I would love to hear your feedback and also your questions that I would do my very best to answer. Thank you. Another way that you could go about it is just to use a box. Now, using a box will give you a little bit more room if you want to put your head directly in the box. Let's say a small isolation box doesn't really work for you. You can use one of these. Same application. You just put a bunch of acoustic foam inside. I usually don't like, even with the box, to glue anything inside because for the amount of times that you're going to use this type of setup, you're probably only going to be using it once or twice a week to do a quick voiceover to make it sound better. So there you go. I mean, it takes just a few seconds or maybe a minute. Put your There it is. Look at it. I'm impressed. I'm really impressed with this work. I'm really impressed with this work. So now I'll do a little sound test on these boxes just so you can kind of hear the difference. So I'll also go in a room where there's a lot of echo. So I'll go in the washroom and see if this El Cheapo box that I built in about a minute works or doesn't work. We'll find out together. Okay, so as you can hear, well, I didn't really think I'd ever bring you guys into my uh, into the washroom with me, but anyway, this is the only room I could find with a lot of noticeable echo, as you can notice. So basically, I hooked this mic up to the computer and it's recording a voiceover and we'll see if the echo is a little bit subsided. Hello buddy, how does it sound now? So now I am, I can kind of still hear an echo behind me, but I'm not sure if you can hear it where you are. So if you're, if you're a person that likes to uh, kill two birds with one stone, this is excellent, this type of box, because you can go in the washroom and if you know that you're gonna be there, <laughs> he didn't crack something. If you think you're gonna be there for an hour, well then, you just bring your sound isolation box, put it there, you can sit sideways on the, on the toilet. I, like, I mean, if, if the toilet's big enough and you're small enough, sit sideways. And then you just uh, do your voice uh, over and nobody would even know that you were in the washroom while doing it because I think it works. So that's basically how I would build one. Takes a couple of minutes and it doesn't cost you that much money. You can also use, I've seen people use the type of foam that goes on top of a mattress. You can easily cut that up to size if you already have that in your home right now that you're not using it. It would save you from clicking in the description below and buying the acoustic foam. So. Probably you already have everything you need in your own home to build this. All you need is a box and some foam. And like I said, if you have a mattress that has that type of foam, go check it out, cut it up to size, make your own acoustic foam. It's fairly easy and it'll probably cost you a lot less money than these professionally cut absorption foam. So if you do want to go with a more professional route and you want to buy one, the one that I was talking about at the beginning of the video, I have that link in the description below. Now, another box that I would recommend is a little bit more expensive, but it is very well built and it looks very good. So if you will be doing some type of podcasting and you don't really have the funds to completely transform the room, and you want something that looks good on your desk, then this is the types of boxes that I would actually go and buy instead of just building whatever, I, whatever it is I built. It does work as you can see or as you could hear. 
So the isolation box that I would recommend is from another one from the company called Pile, but I would actually pay $30 more to get something a lot better in my opinion. Now this box comes in at around $80. What I like about this box is that there is no top or bottom and it just feels a lot less claustrophobic if you're going to be speaking really close to the mic for an extended period of time. So this, some people would say, is more of an isolation shield, but we'll call it a box without a top or bottom. Another thing I like about this box is that you only pay $30 more and you have a much su superior product in my opinion and you have a microphone stand that comes with it. So that's another expense that you don't have to bother or try to figure something out and hold your mic in there. You can put your mic exactly where it's supposed to be inside the box and you should be good to go. So I'll have a link in the description below of this product. Feel free to take a look at many of our other YouTube videos and also some of our articles on our website soundproofguide.com. Don't forget to click the like button if you enjoyed this video and also consider subscribing to our channel if you like our content. Also feel free to leave us a comment below if you have any soundproofing questions of your own. We will certainly try our very best to help you. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video or any other videos in our channel. Thank you very much.